And now, the last card we will flip over in the game. The death card. I'm in the minaret. This is it. Give me the last of the keywords. Would you do something for me? Anything. Hold my hand. The keywords are trick and dead. Well, dead is ominous, but this is kind of a strange room. Well, anyway, trick. Oh, let's see. We've got rope for rope trick. And knife trick. And we've got some trick dice. Ooh, that's a picture of a knee. I've heard of a trick knee. And a trick candle. This was the moment I'd waited for my entire life. Meeting my twin face to face. Now I had to get him out of the tower and far away from Adrian Crawford. I'm sorry it took me so long to find you. You didn't know how good you. Do you know what your name means? Star. It's Persian. Yili, you have to tell me what to do now. We have to leave before Crawford finds out I'm here and tries to stop us. You don't need to worry about him. But he's keeping you here, like a prisoner, you and Celeste. And he's used your powers to- took care of us, Satara. It was members of the Order who betrayed us. They wanted me to die. I don't want to go anywhere. Not even with you. This is my home. That's not good. Well, one last keyword. Seven more words to find it. Dead. Well, we got Grateful Dead. That's a Ringer t shirt. And dead stomp. Dead meat. Be deadlocked. Um, oh, dead bolt. And the last word we will uncover is dead fall. I couldn't believe Yili didn't want to leave. Didn't he realize what kind of man Crawford is? Crawford killed our mother. It was Celeste herself who chose to die. All she had to do was relinquish her power to me. I hope you make a wiser choice, Sadara. Not what you are expecting. Why are you doing this? Because one day, Sadara, you'll be strong. Everything now. Yes. Sydney tried to prepare you. You selected the three cards, and then you went to the tower. It was Yili, not Crawford. You were right about him. He should have died. But how did I get here? Did I do it? Some kind of reflex? Or it had to be someone else who has the gift, right? Was there anyone else other than Celeste? I mean, she's dead, if that was her in the newspaper. But you're here. Couldn't she be here too? I wish she were. You have no idea how much I've missed her. 
Though I haven't now. <sighs> so now, we reach the end of the game, folks. But first... The Eight of Wands represents Merriman's plan to rescue Ely from Crawford's Tower. That didn't go so well. Judgment represents Jess's decision to go to the Minaret and confront Crawford. And Death represents Jess's ill-fated confrontation with Ely and the possibility that Jess is facing absolute annihilation. Now, I could end here and save the finale for later, but there's not much to it. They will explain everything once I hit start, so let's go ahead and finish this out. I don't know why or how, but you and I have been given this chance to put things right. It's like time has been slowed to a crawl, but back in the minaret, your physical self is about to die, and I can't tell you what will happen then. But I'm not strong enough. You weren't strong enough. Now you understand what has to be done. As Sidney told you, your biggest source of power is yourself. As you must know, the card that represents you is the star. You'll need to choose that card, but you have to decide on two others as well. I don't know which cards you should choose, but they need to be as powerful as possible. And if the cards are connected, have a common bond that joins them, it can greatly increase their power. If you choose wisely, I know you can defeat Yili. Let me know when you're ready. Come on. Choose your cards. Click the arrows at the top to scroll through the cards. To survive, or even defeat Yili, choose two cards that will give Jess strength. Having four stars does not make a card powerful, it just means the card is at maximum strength. What the cards represent is what matters most. A meaningful card with one star will be stronger than an insignificant card with four stars. When a card you want is in the center spot, click the purple button below the card. Do the same with your second card and click next to continue. Hit reset to start over. So. What we want to do is scroll through all these cards with the, little, with the summary of everything I've given. And see, we have the same summaries underneath them that we have at the end of every chapter. And we want to select two cards that are linked. So, my choice be first the Wheel of Fortune represents a unique and powerful ability passed down to Jess through her birth mother, Celeste. You remember that, right? Now, the second card. Since I want these two cards to be linked... Eh, where is it? I'm going to select the High Priestess. No, I'm not. No, 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 that's the wrong one. Wrong mother. represents Celeste Tellus, Jess's birth mother, who called out to Sitara in the dream. So I pick the moon, and I pick the Wheel of Fortune. Does this represent the power, and represent her mother? Who, and this should be a complete victory for us. Are you ready? Let's watch the end. See if I chose wisely. I've chosen my card. Are you ready? You didn't answer my question. Where are we? The last memory I have, before being here, is at the motel. After Ben and Lila left, that's where I waited for Crawford, and where I died. Died? This is some kind of transitional place. For those who have the gift, like you, maybe this is the dimension you travel in. So, I'm using my gift right now. Celeste tried to describe it. When you travel, it's only your consciousness that moves. Your physical body is bound to reality. The mortal world. 
moving in only one direction, forward, like a boat on a river. My body is probably buried somewhere near the motel. You, still in the tower, being attacked by Ely. During our time together here, maybe only a few seconds have passed at the minaret, but time can't stop. When you leave here, events will resume, and you may have only moments to draw on your power and fight back against Healy. If you're strong, you'll survive. If you are very strong, you might even get control over your brother, or at least send him back into hiding. I'll stay with you as long as I can. Thank you. As Devon fades away, I feel myself being drawn back. I'm returning to the minaret, to my body. I suddenly remember feeling the same way after I saw my parents at the motel, the first time I used my gift without even knowing it. I start to feel a sensation of heaviness, and then comes the pain. the same strength, but now you'll need more to carry on. Here is out there somewhere. Find her. She'll guide you. I know you have more questions, but I have to leave now. I love you. I always have. I always will. But Crawford is still out there. And what about Yili? Where is he? You've defeated him, Jess. He won't dare confront you again until he can grow stronger. We have work to do, you and I. What kind of work? You're already as powerful as your mother was, but you've only tapped a small portion of your gift. And what am I supposed to do with it? A lot of damage has been done, damage that must be repaired. But there will be time for that later. For now... I want to go home. You won! The cards you chose gave Jess the power she needed to defeat Ely. Now click next to see what happens to Jess after she defeated Ely. Hi there. Are you still in bed? Maybe. I wish I were there. So do I. Okay, that's it. I'm quitting my job, too. <laughs> How are you going to spoil me if you don't have a job? Good point. And uh, speaking of spoiling you, are we still on for the big celebration dinner at Bombay Garden tonight? Absolutely. What exactly are we celebrating? Okay, if you want. I'll pretend it's for something else, but you only turn 30 once. What are you talking about? Your birthday, tomorrow, big 3-0. I don't know. Maybe I'll just stay 29 forever. Yeah, my mom tried that. Didn't work. But uh, I did get you something that'll last forever. A little birthday surprise. Let me tell you something about surprises, Daniel. You just never know how they're gonna turn out. This has been Let's Play Three Cards to Midnight. I have kind of mixed emotions about this game. I mean, yeah, I can see the good points in it, but at its heart, it's still pretty much just a, you know, find the hidden object game, and it does kind of fall a little flat as far as actually being exciting and fast paced. You can tell a lot of it, you can tell it feels very amateurish in spots. The 3D animation 
looks really, really messed up. And the gameplay is, well, you watched it. There isn't a whole lot of, you know, there isn't a whole lot of play that's going to make you actually stretch your, you know, stretch the challenge out there and make you actually work for it. A couple of puzzles that are okay. And the voice acting is kind of hit or miss. Got some good points and bad points, but overall, I don't think this was a horrid first attempt for uh, big finish games. But I think they probably they might have wanted to put a little bit more polish behind this one. But then again, they might have been in a hurry to actually see some capital from it. Who knows? Well, anyway, I'm gonna let the rest of the credits run out. I don't think there are very many more, but. Thanks for joining me, and maybe we'll see everyone back... Oh, the credits are over. And maybe we'll see everyone back for the sequel. I think it's called Three Cards to Dead. Well, anyway. Take care, folks. See you later.